what are my three healthiest liquids, healthiest drinks that you can consume that are going to help you burn fat, help boost your metabolism, help potentially reduce inflammation, but also help you become the best version of yourself. I'm going to break them down. I'm going to make it as simple as possible. Number three is apple cider vinegar. I'm always touting the benefits of apple cider vinegar, but today I'm focusing on one particular component of apple cider vinegar in particular, and that's called acetic acid. That acetic acid is also known as a synthetic carboxylic acid. What that really means is that it's something that affects the body at a genetic level. There was one study in particular that was done by the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry that found that mice that were given acetic acid supplementation had a dramatically lower instance of gaining body fat, even when on a high calorie diet. In fact, by about 10%. What does this essentially tell us? This essentially tells us that acetic acid can affect gene expression. It can actually affect the genetic makeup that allows us to store fat that much more. So apple cider vinegar, sure, it has benefits from the polyphenols that act as prebiotic fibers, gives us good probiotic effect, helps our gut bacteria, helps our immune system. But when we really look down at the genetic level and how it can impact us over the long term by helping our genes make it so we store less fat, that's where I absolutely get blown away. So make sure you're having a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar simply diluted in some water and drinking it with a straw so you're not hurting your enamel. All right, what is my next favorite beverage? This one is Zevia. And I'm not just giving them a shout out because they're a cool brand. I'm giving them a shout out because they've really pioneered the way to create a soda that tastes good made with stevia and really touting the benefits of stevia. So let me give you a quick breakdown on why stevia is more than just an alternative to sugar, but actually a pretty powerful health component in and of itself. The first one is what it does to your blood glucose, the amount of carbs that are essentially flowing through your bloodstream. There was a study by the Journal of Dietary Supplements that found that supplementing stevia, 250 to 500 milligrams per day, dramatically reduced the levels of fasting blood glucose. So not only do we have a plant extract that is helping things taste better, it's making a huge impact on how we metabolize carbohydrates and could even be a huge benefit for those that are fighting diabetes. Additionally, you would never think that stevia has an effect on your bone health. Now, although some of this is anecdotal and there haven't been a lot of peer-reviewed studies done, there have been multiple small-scale studies that have found a pretty serious increase in bone density and bone calcium levels after an extended consumption of stevia. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you're increasing the amount of calcium in your body, but you could be increasing the amount of calcium that is actually absorbed properly. Similar to something that vitamin K2 and vitamin D3 can do, but all the while having a nice taste to it that can make an awesome drink like Zevia. Now the first one on my list is matcha green tea. The reason that I've got matcha green tea on my list is not only because it tastes good, but because there are some tremendous benefits. But what is matcha, just so you know? Okay, matcha is green tea that has been completely destemmed. It's usually been steamed and then it's been concentrated and then it's absolutely obliterated and pulverized into a very, very fine, almost a dust. But what are the benefits of matcha? Like it seems like it's just a regular green tea, right? Well, the benefits of matcha come from the extreme antioxidant properties of something called EGCG. So that's epigallic catechin 3 gallate. And I've done videos talking about that before, but I wanna focus on a couple really interesting components of EGCG that you may not have known. The first one is with cancer. Okay, so EGCG has been shown to increase apoptosis of cancer cells. Apoptosis is the death of a cell. But in some cases, apoptosis is good, like when we're trying to kill cancer cells. So it has a very big impact, and there have been a number of in vitro studies that have shown the actual killing of cancer cells, the apoptosis of cancer cells, particularly with breast and prostate cancer, simply by having EGCG in the mix. It's more than likely doing this by reducing what's called telomerase activity and DNA methyltransferase, a bunch of fancy jargon that essentially means it's slowing down the DNA, the genes that can help those cells grow. That right there is enough to make me wanna drink some matcha green tea every day, but there's more to it than just that. The next benefit of the matcha green tea is how it affects your liver. In fact, there was a study at the University of Connecticut that found that consumption of EGCG and the catechins that are also in matcha and regular green teas had a huge impact on a fatty liver. Some of the studies that they did found that it decreased the amount of fatty oxidation and fatty tissue that was in the liver. 
showing that it can help metabolize some of the fat that's in the liver so you don't develop a fatty liver. As you get older, this is very, very important when you're trying to keep your liver healthy. Now, EGCG has a number of other benefits that can affect the liver, but this is the one that stood out the most from the University of Connecticut. Now, the last effect of matcha green tea that I absolutely want to tout is how it's been shown to reduce inflammation. And I'm gonna explain some science, and it might get a little crazy for a second, but I'm gonna circle it back and have it make sense. Okay, how it works is EGCG can affect the phosphorylation of what is called TAK1. Okay, what TAK1 is, is an inflammatory mediator. Okay, and that inflammatory mediator triggers this cycle of events that signals inflammation. You see, inflammatory mediators either dictate that inflammation is gonna go up or it's gonna go down. And what this particular TAK1 does is when it's downregulated, it allows the body to process inflammation better. So you're not spiking inflammation. So it's not triggering that chain of events that trigger what's called interleukin-1, interleukin-3. Those interleukins would cause inflammation to go up. It signals a downregulation of the mediator so that it doesn't signal those. Basically, what that means is it is a precursor to the reduction of inflammation. It's not directly reducing it, but it's stopping the mediators from upregulating and causing everything to come into balance. So there you have it, the three liquids, the three drinks that you can consume on the daily to get the most out of your body. So just to recap, we've got good old fashioned apple cider vinegar at two tablespoons per day. We've got Zevia as a fun treat whenever you just feel like having a soda. And then we've got matcha green tea that you can have in the morning to get your day going with a little bit of caffeine, but also the antioxidant benefits of epigallogatican 3 galate our friend EGCG. As always, keep it locked in here on the videos to get your health information and cut through the noise without all the fluff on the internet, straight with the facts, straight with peer-reviewed research to make sure that you're getting the truth. So keep it locked in here. Let me know what other videos you wanna see. I'll see you soon.